The Genkai Toki series and its wild combination of JRPG mechanics with fan service based ones makes for a series that I couldn't help be a little curious about when I first heard about the games back when the Vita was alive and well. It's because of this I ended up trying Moiro Crystal H a couple of years ago and actually found myself enjoying the humor in it, at least until it started feeling a little long. This is what kept me curious enough to try its latest entry on Switch 7 Pirates H, which promised the return of Otten, colorful animations, and its humor with third person exploration this time, which is much more up my alley, so I was happy to receive a code for it to try this unique experience. Seven Pirates Age delivers on exactly what it promises in terms of mechanics, with its chest growing antics being how you raise your characters, promising plenty of fan service moments that should satisfy players who pick it up for a healthy dose of that, or those like myself who just want to be amused by it for a little bit. While the length is a little better and its battle mechanics much more interesting, the characters didn't pull me in enough to really commit to the experience beyond my 12 hours with it, but if you're looking for this kind of game and the gameplay of this one appeals to you more than Crystal, it's a decent port that will allow those who want to try it to do so and let this crazy experience live on as a one-of-a-kind fanservice JRPG on Switch. Seven Pirates Age begins by introducing Parute, a young ambitious pirate who finds herself lost at sea with the questionable otter Auden while trying to use a mysterious compass to find treasure. Auden is a much help with getting back to her ship, but he is able to train her with a special training method involving chests, and he also offers to help her find more treasure as the compass leads them to new places on their journey. These new places are filled with the memorable enemies of the Genkai Toki series and new monster girls to find as they head out on their mission of finding treasure, getting back home and discovering many other things about the seas and their world along the way. One of the sole reasons I wanted to play Seven Pirates H was that I remembered the last entry I played, which was Moero Crystal having some funny events, and while Pirate Script is certainly filled with more humorous moments than serious ones, I didn't really find it giving me as much amusement as Crystal did. Some of this, I wonder, is due to the lack of plain protagonists in this story, as in Crystal, it created a nice middle between the Monster Girls and Auten. In this pirate entry, though, since every Everyone, including Parute, is quite unique because of their pirate origins. It made for dialogue that felt pretty similar throughout, and I found myself losing interest in its side events pretty quick as they never really added much to the characters or world, at least not in a way I found overly engaging. In saying that, I'm not really sure how many people are playing this game for the story anyway, although I did get through the 35 hour story of Crystal, where I stopped a few hours short of completing this one at 12 hours, but I also think I'm more okay with dropping games these days that might have played a part as when I finished the first arc in the main story, I felt happy finishing there. If you're more in the story for the fan service illustrations you can see when you meet each of the girls though, you can expect some high quality pictures that I think those that way inclined will enjoy, and while the story fell a little short for me, the gameplay did make up for it a little that made for a fairly enjoyable experience in the time I chose to play it. Seven Pirates Age has much more to offer in terms of fan service than its high quality illustrations, and its training mechanic and special attacks will no doubt keep plenty of that around, all to remind you exactly what kind of game you're playing. But I was impressed with how it used its take on an element system to also make for a uniquely engaging battle system that requires strategy beyond character growth that made for well-rounded gameplay. Each of these pirate monster girls is assigned a type of element of sorts, and in a triangle sense, keeping track of which weakness an enemy is strong or weak against is the way to doing well in battle, aside from keeping good stats. But there's a fun cherry on top that made it interesting, which is that you can spend your MP to shift to any of the elements to try and get the upper hand. And since you build MP by doing regular attacks, it was fun to build up until I could switch over, and the fact that enemies can shift elements too means that you're often kept on your toes in boss battles, which made for a battle system that had victories feel satisfying. You're also balancing in battle an excited form of sorts that the girls can reach when they get 200 MP that unlock special attacks, but you can only use these in their assigned element. So this also added a bit of balance, as I usually found I had one unit I was trying to get to this form, and the rest I was hammering out skills with using the appropriate element that kept battles fairly interesting. This on top of the fact that I just generally enjoy exploring in the third person view more meant that exploring was definitely more enjoyable in this entry, and the visuals definitely take advantage of the fact that you can very much see these girls on screen at all times, including the results of your training that I'll talk about in a second. 
Dragon. If you like Compal Heart RPGs, the exploration and battle feels like one of their smart and unique systems that makes for good gameplay outside of just fan service, although there's plenty of that to see in the various animations that creates for a well-made JRPG for this niche. One of the big selling points of Seven Pirates H is the way in which you level up your characters, with XP not existing in this pirate world and instead special extracts that allow you to partake in a certain training with your characters that raises stats which you'll need to do as this game can actually provide a challenge. This also provides the biggest form of fan service in it that I don't know how much I'll be able to show in this video, but I do know it had me refrain from using this mechanic when playing my Switch outside because it certainly is eye-catching. If you like this kind of thing, this is probably one of the things you are looking forward to in Seven Pirates and I don't think it disappoints, especially since you can even visually see your characters have grown stronger thanks to how their waist-up region changes the more you do this, and I didn't actually know this game would have a visually changing element that had me very amused wondering if something did or didn't change on these girls' character models until it became obvious that things definitely did. And to make things even better, the training is easy to dish out, both in handheld and docked mode that makes it easy to do however you're playing. It's pretty much a perfect way to level up characters in this type of game that frankly even manages to keep its premise alive and well, and if you like this kind of thing as a point of humor, you'll also find it in plenty of other places in Seven Pirates, from the enemy designs to the group that helps you throughout your journey, all clearly inspired by things that are fun to spot as Pirates is really creative in all the places you can put these things. All in all, I liked the gameplay of Seven Pirates Age, even if I did ultimately feel underleveled at the end of my time with it, which I could fix with some of the boosts included with the H version if I ever decide to pick it up again. I don't know if I will, thanks to the story not really doing it for me, and almost wish the story and premise of Moero Crystal could be combined with the fun exploration and battles of this one. But Seven Pirates Age never promised an incredible story, but rather just fun gameplay and mechanics that are unique, and in that sense, I think it delivers on exactly that, which is all I can really ask for in the end for this game. While the Vita version of Seven Pirates never made its way to the beloved handheld in the West, in the Switch version, just from the way Pirates H looks and runs, I'm pleased to say it's mostly a good port, with the girls' character models looking high quality exactly when they should, and the frame rate and everything else having nothing that stuck out much as I played. I did have one crash on the overworld map while I was about to collect a crew member when luckily I had saved, but it was the only time I had a crash. And aside from that, my gameplay experience was overall pretty smooth, even if there were a few textures and special attacks that clearly seem to have been skipped over when preparing for this re-release, but I guess all that was in exchange for the character models being sharp at all times, which is probably more important for this kind of game. It's a worthy way to try this wild JRPG in English, and even the localization had no problems to speak of throughout, which is nice, along with a fun Japanese voiceover that may require you to wear headphones wherever you play due to the sounds that these girls make. If you've been waiting for this one to come to the West and you think you'll like the overall experience, I'd say it's worth worth picking up if you're a fan of this kind of thing. And while the story didn't do it for me, at least the gameplay is fun, that means that most people can at least get something out of this crazy JRPG experience. Seven Pirates H promised many things, from Monster Girls, turn-based battles, and its fan service mechanics that make sure to deliver on from the get-go. While it didn't capture me with the story side of things, I could appreciate the time I spent with it in my 12 hours, and even think if I had used it to H edition benefits like its extract and gold booster from the beginning of my playthrough, I possibly could have finished it in a day and had it feel like a smoother experience progression-wise, but I certainly appreciated its length being more appropriate in this entry, especially since a lot of my time was spent in its enjoyable battles too. I'm sure those who like these types of games beyond the humor aspects will be able to get more out of it, as there's so much fan service in it, it feels like a fever dream. And while I'm not sure I'll jump into the series again anytime soon, it would be cool to see it strike the balance between good gameplay and fun story in future entries. But nevertheless, Seven Pirates H did deliver on what it promised, and there's not more I could ask of it, and I hope that those who are looking forward to trying it enjoy this new portable entry. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you're going to try Seven Pirates H, and if you have, what did you think of it? You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. Thank you to East Asia Soft for the code, and until next time, thank you, bye!